Physics Notes, Units 7.4 to 7.6, Part B, Conservation of Energy. I want to just take a little bit of a broader look at the Law of Conservation of Energy, which, as we've stated before, is energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. Here is the general format that we were using, or are using. Kinetic, this, uh, your initial energy, your kinetic energy in GPE, plus any energy put in, minus any energy that goes out, equals your final energy. As I mentioned, there are other types of energy besides kinetic and GPE. For example, down here is a broader statement of the law of conservation of energy. It's more comprehensive in a sense. The energy initial, all right, plus energy, any energy input which is usually done by work. Work is energy input. Work is a transfer of energy. Minus energy output. That's usually work done by friction. Equals the final amount of energy. And as I mentioned before, it's a lot like accounting. It's just kind of balancing your books. So one other kind of energy that might show up in the lab, I think in particular, but in the homework problems, is what's called spring potential energy. And a lot of times it's symbolized as PE sub S, potential energy of a spring. It's measured in joules. It looks familiar to kinetic energy, but it has nothing to do with motion per se. It has to do with how much you stretch a spring or compress a spring. It's kind of like back when you, uh, when you were a kid and you had these dart guns with like these suction cups and you put this dart in there and you shot it and stuck to a wall or whatever. But X, X stands for how much the spring inside that dart gun compresses. Or the other way you can put energy in a spring is by stretching it. It's a lot like elasticity. Now we have K, which is particular to a spring. It's the spring stiffness, so to speak. It's uh, like, a, for example, a, a large, a really stiff spring, like springs that are in cars, like in the suspension of cars, have a really, really, really high K value because they're hard to compress and they're hard to stretch, but they help dampen the bounce of your car, keep it as a, a smoother ride. So a really flimsy spring, like a spring you might have in a watch, or like this dark, the dark gun may have a really small sp uh, spring constant. And they're in, the units are newtons per meter. So how far you stretch it from its non-stretched position is X. Or how far you compress it. You can, do, you can put energy in a spring either way, compressing or stretching. And once again, the energy is in joules. Okay, now some other kind of guidelines here that I've sort of mentioned before, but I think I've spelled it out a little bit better here. In a lot of books, not so much this book, but the capital letter U is for general potential energy. So U sub G is GPE, which is what we've been using. Uh, our book uses PE sub G, all mean the same thing, gravitational potential energy. Then U sub S, spring potential energy, SPE or PE sub S. Once again, your book likes to use this kind of notation over here. Right, so I think it's not that hard to figure this out. So capital U, capital U, will be used in many, many books. All right, so let's uh, apply the law of conservation of energy to a mass on a spring. Let me explain this. There's a couple ways that springs can be hooked to masses. Here we have a mass attached to a spring, and it, it was it, they're going to pull the mass back to this position position A, which is basically, let me label this, a distance of, we're going to call that X, that's our X in the 1 half KX squared, which I will apply here in a minute. Pull the mass back to that location, and this says it's, there's a frictionless table. So when I release this mass, this mass will then slide, be pulled, because the spring pulls it, because it's been stretched out, pulls it this way, it'll slide to position negative A, negative x, it will stop there and it'll, it'll bounce back and forth between those two positions. That's called simple harmonic motion when it's undergoing that oscillation. Next semester, next term, we will more specifically study simple harmonic motion. Right now, just kind of put that in the back of your mind. 
but that mass bounces back and forth. Another example of simple harmonic motion is a pendulum, like they have in old clocks where the, the, the clock uh, has a long string or a long pole that holds a mass and it swings back and forth through a regular interval, all right? And you can keep time with that. You can keep time with this. This oscillates back and forth. We're not gonna do any of that right now, but it basically it's bouncing back and forth uniformly between those two positions. But we wanna focus on the energy transformations. So when it's stretched out, it has spring potential energy. And then when you let go of it, it transfers to kinetic energy. So this one is not gonna have GPE. You can, you can hook a, a spring up vertically, like from a ceiling and then pull the mass downward and let it bounce up and down, then you have an even more complicated situation where there's going to be transformations from spring potential to GPE and kinetic. So there's going to be three things involved, and that's one more application. But right here, we're going to have the application of conservation of energy such that we're transferring spring potential energy to kinetic energy as it bounces back and forth. And there's no friction, so it'll just keep bouncing back and forth forever. If there were friction, it would slow down, slow down, and stop eventually. That's called damped, damped, D-A-M-P-E-D, -E damped. Uh, uh, simple harmonic motion where it comes to rest. Well, once again, look at that more specifically in the second semester. But right now, here's our general statement of conservation of energy. And we have to use some rational thought here. When you first pull the spring back, it has spring potential energy, and then it will be transferring to kinetic energy. So, so let's just look at pull like this location right here. All right, I'm going to take that position right there, and at that position, you will have uh, potential energy of the spring. Okay, and then it's going to be plus energy energy you put in minus any energy that goes out. In this case, there's no friction, so that's going to be zero, most likely. Equals, or will be zero, E final. All right, now E final, in this case, if you read the question, it says, we pull it back. Uh, it says, if the spring constant is 35 newtons per meter, what is the maximum speed of the mass? Now, when you start talking about speeds, you're almost always talking about kinetic energy. Now, the, so this is, this is the initial location right here. This is the initial location. That says initial location. And this is going to be our final location for maximum speed. Because we have to think about this rationally. As it slides to the left, it stops at each endpoint. A stands for amplitude. You don't need to know that. Basically, that's how the X, though, is how far it's been stretched. That's the important thing in the equation. Uh, the potential energy of a spring is one half kx squared. But as it slides, it speeds up to point or to the zero spot. And then the spring starts to compress and slows the mass down. So it speeds up to this middle spot, then slows down. So in this particular case, we have E initial equals E final. This is our final location. This is the final location. Just for reference in this problem, I mean, Negative A, we could say, well, what happens when it goes from A to negative A? Well, all it is is a, it's a transfer of, of spring potential to kinetic and then kinetic back into spring potential. So at point A, we'll have the same spring potential as it start off. Well, we're not talking about the negative A location right now. We're talking about this middle location because the, uh, the, the mass speeds up. So what's happening here is E final, E final in this, this particular situation is going to be the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy at... The middle spot, the middle location. So to put in the specifics here, I'm going to rewrite everything. So we're going to have this is going to be one half kx squared, your initial stretch, plus any energy in. Now in this case, the energy in, there's nobody pushing or doing work, so this will be zero in this problem. That's going to be zero. And there's no friction, so that's zero. Once again, when there's no friction, basically that's always going to be zero with no friction. That's almost the only exclu that's the exclusive way where energy goes out or transfers to the environment or to microscopic particles. 
and there's nobody doing anything within this. It's just the table sliding back and forth. There's no external agent applying another force and putting energy in. So that's going to equal, well, I can just say plus, I'll go back to the red, plus zero. So that was plus zero minus zero equals E final, which is one half MV squared. Because this is going to be kinetic energy. This is kinetic energy at the middle location. So it's, I'm kind of overkilling it here. So it's going to be one half kx squared equals one half mv squared. It's a straight transformation of spring potential energy to kinetic energy. Now it's asking for the velocity, the maximum speed. Well, that will be the location of the maximum speed. So I can solve this for v. To solve this for v, I could plug the numbers in now if I wanted to, or I can solve it for v, then plug the numbers in. But the one halves are going to cancel. And let's go forward here. So I have kx squared equals mv squared. And I'm going to have kx squared divided by m equals v squared. And then if I just keep going there, I'll take the square root of both sides. I'm going to get v equals the square root of kx squared over m. So I flopped the equation around, took the square root. So this is a pretty much just a straight forward problem at this point because I gave you k. Double check your units. k was what? Uh, 35 newtons per meter. That's good. You got to convert to newtons and meters. It's already done for you. So it's 35. Shoot, I didn't look at what the distance was again. 30, so that's 35. You want the distance in meters. How far back did I pull that thing? The farther back I pull it, the more energy it has. Uh, 27 centimeters. Also, a, a footnote here is the mass doesn't matter. All right? The mass on the spring doesn't matter in this particular case. So, um, I'm sorry, why did I say that? It does matter. It does matter. Um, it's in the equation. So strike that. But uh, for pendulums, um, for pendulums, the mass doesn't matter. Simple harmonic motion. For what's mass is on a spring, the mass does matter. It certainly matters. So 0 0.27, 0 0.27 meters, don't forget to square that, and then divided by the mass, which was 450. So that's 0 0.450, it was 450 grams. And 450 grams is 0 0.450 kilograms. So we had to convert the centimeters to meters and the kilograms to grams. You plug that all in, the, the grams to kilograms, and it comes out to be, in your calculator, it comes out to be 2.4 meters per second. That's the maximum speed. And it, you know, it goes from 0 meters per second at the two endpoints, and it speeds up and it slows down, speeds up and it slows down. It transfers the energy from spring potential to kinetic. All right, so that's another application of the law of conservation of energy.